This guy is a wrecking machine, and he's hungry. All of you chumps are gonna bow. I'm gonna show you how great I am. Money. You are listening to The Real Estate Debate with Mr. Credit on AM760 KFMB. If you'd like to contact Mr. Credit, visit mrcredit.org. Welcome to The Real Estate Debate, where we debate the hottest topics in San Diego real estate. Mr. Credit here, your host, and judging today's debate, my good buddy Dale Intrican is here from Synergy One Lending. Dale, how are you doing, sir? I, I, feel, I feel really good. Well, you don't, you're not the bionic man anymore, no, so walking. it must feel good. Yeah, Torn feels great. Achilles, that's all healed up now? It Kind of, but are, yeah. Are you a little ginger? Are you afraid of it's just going to happen again? Yeah, you get like a post-traumatic stress <laughs> with, it, with the injury, for sure. <laughs> no Every sudden step movements. you take, that song, we should have queued that up for you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because I've, I've, I've dealt with people who've had that injury before, and I know it's a really tough one. So, Dale, it's great to have you back in here. And by the way, Dale, tough it out throughout that injury, throughout the crutches and whatever that thing was you were wearing. He came in and judged the show. We really appreciate your contributions here. Um, I wanted to talk to you about a couple of things. Um, first of all, your website, homelandingsandiego.com, where people can contact you. A lot of great resources there. But equity repositioning was something that came up in kind of like the early 2000s, which is where people would access their equity, do cash out refinances, use that equity for other investments or other real estate purchases. Um, I'm curious about your feeling on equity reposition and then also the state of the cash out refi these days and how it works. Yeah, the uh, the that loan almost disappeared for a few years, especially right. after the market collapsed because the equity wasn't there. People couldn't access the money as easily. Lenders r- drew back their uh, loan to value requirements and really tightened up. Um, but recently, we've obviously with over the last two, three years, we've seen equity in, in, in appreciate in this in San Diego County by 30 percent since 2012. And because of that, we're able to access some of that money to utilize for paying off debt, you know, things that people, you know, can't write off, you know, car loans, you know, uh, credit cards. But then on top of it, you can use that money to help buy another home to get in yourself into a position to create wealth through real estate. Right, right. So um, in the past, it was like 80%. I think it got up to 90% at one point. You could do cash out through conventional loans. And I think you get up even higher than you that You could back go then. to 100 in the yeah. subprime market and then even to 125% yeah. at one point. Um, what does that look like these days as far as legitimate cash out LTV requirements? It, it depends on what program you're going with. Fannie Mae requirements, if you're a regular conforming limit, 80%. Um, okay. FHA can go up to 85%, but that carries really? MI. Okay. Um, and VA lets you get all the way up to 90% cash in hand, but all VA refinances are considered cash out if they're not they VA to VA. But if you're a, you know, actually getting cash in hand for something, you can only go to 90%. 90%. But you can go all the way up to hundred on a regular VA if there's no cash in hand. Okay. For just a, a rate and term refinance. Exactly. Yeah. The VA is such a great program. Okay. So 90% for VA, 85% FHA and 80% conventional to do cash out, get the cash and essentially use it for whatever you want. Exactly. And the, and the fact that there was mortgage insurance on so many loans over the last couple of years, and we've seen equity improve. It's, I mean, it's, it's a great time to, if you're going to pay off some debt and do things, you might actually still be able to lower your payments. Might still be able to lower your payments and get the cash to pay off Mm -hmm. your debt. It's a great opportunity right now in this low interest rate environment. Call my buddy Dale Intrican with Synergy One Lending. You can go to homelendingsandiego.com or you can call him directly at 619-379-7101. That's 619-379-7101. Dale. You're the judge today. Uh, know, it's always it's like, high pressure. It's like Goliath versus Goliath versus Goliath in here today. I mean, it's uh, this is a really good crew we've got. Uh, how do you feel about today's show? I think it's going to be exciting. I think I saw some of the the content before I was reading through it. I was I was uh, I'm I, I'm eager to hear this. Yes. Hear some of these answers. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's great, and uh, I don't envy your position. So good luck as the judge today. Of course, I will be judging the challenges. I want to see some red flags. Yeah, I think I think that's going to happen today, my friend. Good. So well, let's uh, meet today's contestants. Okay, sounds good. All right. Up first, seat number one, my good buddy. For years now, Gary Kent is here. Mr. Everywhere from Keller Williams Realty and GaryKent.com. Gary, you've been on the show many times before. Yes. Never on the real estate debate, though. No. First time. So how do you feel about your chances today in this format? Looking at uh, my competition, not good. (laughs) (laughs) Gary is always a straight shooter uh, and has been around for a long time doing real estate. You've been through several cycles um, in the the foreclosure, short sale cycle. So I'm really interested to get your opinion, especially on our rapid fire topic today. I really appreciate being here, man. Thank you. Okay, great stuff from Gary Kent and uh, GaryKent.com. Brian Curry is here. Champ, we got two champs in the house. This Mm -hmm. is one of them. Brian Curry is here from Caldwell Banker and BrianCurry.com. BC, it's great to have you back. Great to be back. 
Great yeah. to see you. So this, you said these headsets are bringing you back to the Navy days, huh? Yeah, the yeah I used to days. fly in helicopters, and this is, I'm having flashbacks everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a little bit too high in this seat right now. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling like you're going to make it, man. Yeah, I think I'll be right. Yeah, you're a lot safer now than you were in those helicopters. I don't know. With this crew, though, this is a, this a, is a tough crowd, isn't it? This is a tough group of guys right here. This well, is hey, good stuff The right worst here. thing that could happen is you catch a challenge flag in the eye. So there you go. That, and yeah. You'll live, I promise. <laughs> Thanks for being here, Mr. Curry. Also, another champion in the house, champ John Lieber is here from Remax and JohnLieber.com. What's up, John? Hey, having a good day. Glad to be here. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, it's great to have you. You know, you're always a great competitor. Um, you came back, you know, you have one of the, the story that I tell everyone is your story on the real estate debate. You know, you lost the first two times. You were like, man, I'm not going over three on this thing. You came in and you won in a really tough situation. And here you are back looking for your second golden microphone trophy. So yeah, now I've got like a full book of notes yeah, here. Like so five pages it's of notes incredible. over here. What the heck's going on? <laughs> He doesn't like to lose. Okay, former professional golfer. All right, this is a guy. He doesn't like to lose. That's a tough game. I uh, appreciate you being here, John. Thanks Thank a lot. You. Daniel Buxa is also here with uh, Mission Realty Group and San Diego HomesalePros.com. It's your first appearance on the show. Thank you for being here, Daniel. Thank you for having us. Yeah, so you've seen the format of the show before. Absolutely. Okay, you ready to compete in the debate? We're going to have an awesome time, guys. All right. Excited. I, I have a feeling he might be the first flag here. I don't know what there the under is. Uh, Casey <laughs> might there, back there might know. Let's go ahead and fire it up with Rapid Fire. Let's go around the table for Rapid Fire. I'm going to give you to the count of 10 to get your ugly, yellow, no good keister off my property before I pump your guts full of lead. Keep it short and keep it on point. One, two, ten. Fire away. Keep the change, you filthy animals. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> We're going a different direction with Rapid Fire this week because there is a unique situation taking place in the market right now, at least from my perspective. We'll find out from our in-studio experts if this is true or not. But many people who have been patiently waiting for home prices to rebound have got what they were waiting for. However, not quite enough of it. So these homeowners who are still upside down in their homes because they bought at the peak of the market are seeing appreciation decelerate and are wondering what to do. Today's rapid fire topic is more of a round table topic, but I'd like to discuss with this week's in studio experts the short sale. Is it alive? Can people still do it? And should some of these homeowners who are still upside down be considering it? Gary Camp, starting with you. Uh, I would say it's still alive. Just closed one. I have one going. So, yeah, consider it. Yeah, it's still alive? Yes. Still happening. Still Bank, happening. Banks are still negotiating, some of the people can still consider. Yeah, they, they don't have their brightest and best in the short sale department. Hope none, hope none of them are listening. But, uh, uh -huh. yeah. Well, nothing that we can do about it now, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. It's out there. Brian, why did you say that? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Curry, what do you think about short sales right now? I think, it, uh, I think it depends on what segment we're talking about. Okay. Okay. So let's throw a couple numbers out there right now in San Diego County. And this is everything. This is detached, detached PUDs, two to four units. There are 1,064 notice of defaults in the county. Okay. Okay. So I did my basis of, of my numbers evaluation on detached homes. Right now, active in the market, there are 4,644 homes active. Pending, there are 3,240. Wow. Okay. Contingent, which means most in most cases not everybody reports this correctly but in most cases a contingent offer simply means it has an offer accepted subject to lender approval i.e. a short sale okay there's only 498 hmm. okay so i got 1064 nod's filed on every type of property in san diego county and i only have 498 detached homes so i went a little bit further into the trend so here's what's interesting about it the price of a short sale is actually moving up a little bit. So the average price for a short sale right now is $350,000. So the average. Okay. That's the average. Okay. Now, above 589000 the trend line is actually decreasing significantly. So most of the short sales are happening in the bottom part of the market. That's really interesting. So is this happening in condos? Could be. Is this happening? You know, obviously that affects lending. We can get into that whole argument too with HOAs, but it seems like a majority of the short sales are still happening in the attached market, vice the detached market. Interesting, very, very interesting. But they're still happening. Which they're is, still happening, which is could could be good news for some people who are stuck in mm -hmm. that predicament. Great stuff from Brian Curry, John Lieber. What do you think about short sales right now? Well, so it's a bit of a two-part question here, and I'm taking this from the perspective of the person that bought in 05, 06, when things were at the peak. Mm -hmm. They lost a lot of equity. Now they're getting close. And one, as far as advice to that type of seller or that type of homeowner, I would say, 
look at look at all your available options. And the one thing that people really didn't keep in mind during the big the big short sale years we had in 2009, 10, 11 is that there has to be a legitimate hardship. And people mm-hmm. people forget that sometimes and just think, well, I don't have any equity. I'm going to just do a short sale and walk away and I'll buy again in a year or two and we'll, we'll figure it out. So there has to be a legitimate hardship, number one. Two, there are refinance options. And you know someone like Dale can answer questions like that, but there's still a uh, FHA streamline. There's still a VA to VI, VA rate reduction. HARP is still out there a little bit. So you do have some options to reposition yourself and refinance and get a lower interest rate. You might not reduce your um, your principal, but you can reduce your your interest rate and make your payment affordable again. Um, you know, the next thing is looking at it from the big picture. If you're going to do a short sale, what is your option after the short sale? Are you going to be able to rent something that's in a similar area and everything else as you've got now? And what's that rent going to be? Is it going to be more than what your current mortgage payment is? So there's a lot of there's just a lot of uh, things that are up in the air to there. Consider. So I think yeah. the biggest thing is, um, you know, check with a professional, especially someone that's, you know, I think we would probably all use short sale negotiators here, but someone that actually is in the trenches still doing short sales because you can still do a short sale even if you're not behind on payments with a certain lender. So you can you can test things out, see if you can get a short sale done and not not go upside down credit wise either. Yeah, no, that's a great advice. Look at your re- look at all your options, including refinancing. And one more point, if you don't mind, please. There are going to be more short sales for a couple reasons. Um, it, it, what I looked into is number one, you've got a lot of these ten year interest only loans that are going to come due in two thousand fifteen and sixteen, and they're and they're balloon loans. So you're going to have a lot of people that have the entire principal balance of their loan due coming up pretty soon, and they don't have equity and they can't do anything other than short sell. And you have all, all these enhanced loan mods from 09 and 10 that are going to come due too when that, when that extremely low interest rate shoots up. And resets. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really good points. Daniel Buxa. Hey, how you guys doing? Doing great, man. Um, for me, I, I look at it more just from personal experience. I was a loan officer myself from 03 to 07 at Countrywide Home Loans. And wow. if someone had a heartbeat and a social security number, they were getting a loan. And at the times, I just would laugh at it. It's like you would do a verification of job, and it, you, you'd you be calling someone not even knowing who you were calling. Um, there was really no checks and balances. It was just crazy town. So for me, seeing this spike in short sales was no big surprise to me because clearly these people could not afford the homes. Um, loan guidelines today, it's like a night and day difference. Um, you talk to your buyers right now, and it's like they want tax returns, job history, uh, their letters of explanation for every little, you know, I moved a couple thousand dollars to this bank account. They want to know, why did you move that two grand there? What was that for? So I just think that they're so thorough and so on top of things right now that seeing short sales in the future, we might have little peaks and valleys based off a lot of the things the guys are saying here, but I don't really see anything on the magnitude that we had. Um, so you think a trickle, isn't that about it? We're going to get trickles here and there, but I just don't really foresee this coming unless they really lax up on loan guidelines and just let people get, uh, you know, these phony loans again. Okay. All right. Makes sense. Great stuff so far from our in-studio experts coming up. We'll be doing agree or disagree we have a great topic. We'll make you smarter than everyone else. It's all guaranteed right here in the Real Estate Debate, AM 760 KFMB. Welcome back to the Real Estate Debate with Mr. Credit on AM 760 KFMB. Welcome back. Thank you for hanging out with us on your Sunday afternoon. Mr. Credit here listening to the Real Estate Debate. Time to check in with our judge, Dale Interkin, with Synergy One Lending and HomeLendingSanDiego.com. Dale, how do the scores look so far? Well, the uh, the returning champs had jumped out to a, an advantage this, this round. Uh, Gary and, and Daniel both have two. Okay. Uh, Brian has four and John has five. John has five. Brian has four. Okay. Gary and Daniel both have two points. All right. Still anyone's game as we go to agree or disagree. Time now for Agree or Disagree. Can't we just settle this over the paint? Agree? Yes! Yes! Or Disagree. To call you stupid would be an insult to stupid people! Let's get it on! 
Okay, our contestants will have about one minute. Uh, contestants, if you hear the buzzer, that means you've run out of time to either agree or disagree and tell us why you agree or disagree with the following statement. Uh, we've seen the market grow a lot in the last five years as far as prices are concerned. Uh, now, there are a lot of people with equity, as we discussed earlier. They're wondering why it's a good thing. Why is equity a good thing if it could go away if we have a bad year or two in the market? So with that in mind, consider today's agree or disagree statement. When the market is good, homeowners should consider selling to capture equity and redistribute any tax-free profits into other investments, real estate or not. Brian Curry, starting with you. I agree to disagree, okay. and I disagree to agree okay. on that one. I think that this is where a professional comes in. A real estate professional walks in and creates a strategy. So in some cases, absolutely, it's time to sell. It's, and and it's, it, there's so many factors involved. What's your age? What's your intention with your family? What's your intention with your retirement? Are you staying in San Diego or are you leaving San Diego? You know, all these things factor in. You know, it lends back into the first topic about, you know, exactly where is the market? You know, are you close? Are you a lot of equity, a little equity? So I think that, you know, if you're elderly, um, if you, you know, can't keep up with deferred maintenance, if the house is starting to become a burden, I think that's obviously a time that you start looking to sell. Um, if you're young, you're planning a family, you're, you're thinking about moving up and staying in San Diego, I think it's a great time to sell because the rates are so good. Okay. Um, so what you're saying is this can't be the only reason. You need other reasons. You need other factors. Okay. There, you have to evaluate factors. John Lieber, agree or disagree with uh, the statement about when the market's good, homeowners should consider selling to capture equity and redistribute those profits to other investments. I disagree with that. Um, you know, the, you have to look at your house is an investment, but it's so much more than that. I mean, it's it's where you you create a lifestyle. It's where you raise your kids. It's where they go to school. It's your family and friends. It's so much more than just all right. It's an investment. I've got a couple hundred thousand dollars in equity. Let's sell it. The other part of that is, if I could think of a better investment than real estate right now, I would say yeah, let's let's consider it. But what's what's better right now than real estate? At least the last few years. And where can you leverage that investment to create more wealth? So I think a better alternative could be pulling cash out, like Dale spoke about, um, and using that to invest if you've got that much equity where it's just flowing out of your, your front door. <laughs> um, but you know, one, one thing I was considering was, okay, if you bought a house for $500,000, you put 20% down. If your house went up 10%, over a couple of years, you've made 60 plus percent of your money. Yeah. Where, you know, it, you can't leverage that unless you're really sophisticated in the stock market. You're not going to get much in money markets or anything else that's even going to keep up with inflation. So hard to spend the night in your stocks. You I, know would, what I, mean? I would park it in the house. That's the thing. That's the tough one. Okay. Great stuff from John Lieber. Daniel Buxa. Yeah. I think we're hearing the same tune here. A lot of the things that I always look is really the goals of the client. So if you're not listening to your client and breaking down the goals of the actual client, you're not doing them really any service. I mean, maybe people don't want to move out of their house. Maybe it is a good time to do it like an equity reposition, pull the money out and invest in other things. Um, so my opinion is real estate's really a long-term investment. I, if I ever get a client that asks me, should I buy a home if I'm moving in the next, leaving in the next two or three years, I tell them no every time. If you're not going to at least keep a property for five to 10 years, um, there is a lot of risk involved in it. But if you look at real estate over a long period of time, it's always a good investment. So for me, it really depends on goals of my client. And I'm always trying to make sure people are making good long-term decisions. Okay. Yeah, that's all. That's, oh, Please. hey. Oh, there hold hold, hold, hold job, on a buddy. second. Let, let me find. Let me. <laughs> it moved on my... <laughs> On my pad here, we've got a we've got a challenge. John this is Lieber the first one I've ever thrown. Has challenged Daniel hey. Bucks at thirty seconds, John. On, on the point where if if you're going to move in the next two or three years to never consider buying a home, mm -hmm. I would say that's that's a little bit misleading because I would say if you can find a property where if you look at it like this is potentially going to be an investment property for me. And my rent's going to well well more than cover that mortgage payment, and I move in two years. All of a sudden, I've I've bought a property with a you know maybe a minimal down payment. That's a great investment for me for decades, and I'm just going to hold it and, and buy something else if I move out of the area or you know whatever buy another home. Okay, that's your thirty seconds. So I Daniel, you have thirty here. seconds to rebuy. I, I feel that on a two to three year timeline, the risk is so much greater for your client. So. Um, there might be times where it might be appropriate if they buy a home for two to three years, but for a majority, 
of our clients out there, if you're ever recommending them to buy something with the intent of maybe making money on it in a two to three year timeline, I just think you're uh, putting them, putting their neck on the line. Okay. Too much risk. Okay. I'm going to give this one to Daniel. Uh, hey. and, and the reason is, uh, John, I understand where you're coming from, but the main reason is that, yeah, you do, you really put yourself up against it. If you know you have a hard uh, deadline to be out or to, uh, to move or whatever it may be, it could be too risky for people. Uh, Gary Kent, do you agree or disagree uh, with uh, when the market's good, homeowners should consider selling to capture equity, redistribute tax, uh, tax-free profits to other investments? Okay. I'm going to give a nuanced answer. I'm going to say I agree only because you have the word consider and literally should they consider it, but I think most people shouldn't do it. <laughs> so that's my nuanced, nuanced answer. And uh, some of the things I'm going to say have been said by these other fine gentlemen, but you know, there's more to, more to life than money. A home is not just an investment. It, it's a home. So I don't think that many people are going to be like, okay, the price is up. Let's sell. Let's hang in there and wait till they're down. Then we'll buy and then we'll run it up and sell. Um, a friend of mine did that. He had a house, uh, sold it at what he thought was a peak, and then the market went up, and he's been renting for years, waiting for the prices to go down. Hasn't worked out for him. So yeah, that can be tough. Yeah. Okay. No, good answer. Uh, and I think you know people should consider it. And the reason is because a lot of people left the ec- left equity on the table last time, and there's a lot that you can do with that equity. Um, but when you leave it on the table, once it's gone, it's gone. You know, when you put a hundred thousand down on your house and prices go down, then that money's gone. Poof, it's gone. It's not there anymore. Um, if you know, I mean, it's just, it's not. So when you, I think when you have the opportunity to use equity, you should really consider it as it was mentioned in the statement, which of course these statements are all from me. So I always agree with them. Uh, coming up, it's time for hot or not so hot. Let's find out what markets in San Diego are hot, which ones are not. We'll make you smarter than everyone else. Stick around. Welcome back to The Real Estate Debate with Mr. Credit on AM760 KFMB. Welcome back. Thank you for hanging out with us on your Sunday afternoon. Mr. Credit here. You're listening to The Real Estate Debate where we debate the hottest topics in San Diego real estate. Of course, you can find out more at therealestatedebate.com. We're halfway through the show. Our Judge Dale Intrican with Synergy One Lending and HomeLendingSanDiego.com. Dale, what do the scores look like halfway through today? Halfway through. We got Gary's got five. Daniel is at six, Brian is at seven, and John's at nine. You got to remember, Daniel has two flags now. That is a good point. Uh, so John has nine points. Nine. Wow, this has got really interesting because the flags are all worth two points. Daniel has two flags right now. He took John's flag, so John appears to be in the lead, but that's actually not quite the, the flags case. Flags are worth points now. Yeah, they were two, they've always been worth two points. <laughs> I thought this was golf scoring and the low <laughs> score wins. That's not fair. What's going on here? <laughs> All right, it's time for hot or not so hot. Time now for hot or not so hot. So hot right now. Let's find out if your neighborhood is heating up. It's hot. Or if your district is on the decline. I am completely miserable, San Diego. <laughs> it gets me every time. <laughs> All right, we're starting with John Lieber. Uh, each contestant will tell us about a specific area in San Diego that they believe is either hot or not so hot. Of course, contestants, please be ready to explain with any data or real events you have to pos- support your position. We're starting with you, John Lieber. Tell us about a hot or not so hot market. Well, first of all, I just wanted to let you know that Daniel was agreeing with my rebuttal uh-huh. at our break. So I just wanted, <laughs> to, just wanted to bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, I've been, on a, <laughs> I've been on a few times now. And when I looked at this, I was like, man, I can't believe I missed this hot market because I, I truly think it's the hottest market in San Diego and it really? has been for a while. And it's the two to four unit, multi-unit properties. Hmm. And when you look at oh, all the listings point. on the market. Bonus points, Dale. You've got, so there's 6,300 single family and, you know, detached and attached homes that are active. You've got 200, less than 250 two to four unit properties right now. And That's amazing. In the areas where I'm working with, it's a lot of central San Diego and some East County and um, kind of a mix, a pretty broad mix. But there's like 50 of these properties available. That's it between probably two, three dozen zip codes. And going back to the kind of investment mindset on this, I think I've got buyers lined up who would take a property that offered better than a 5 or 6% return that was in a decent area. So as soon as any of those come on the market, they're absolutely gone. 
I think Daniel wants to hand you one well, right we're now. We're going to be pitching a Perfect. property here in a minute. <laughs> so yes. I would say there, there's, if, you can, if you can look at it like if you're going to buy a property, live in one of the couple of units, live in one of, the, um, one of the units for a little bit, and the numbers make sense, I mean, it, it, can, it can start an investment portfolio for you. I think the areas in particular that are really hot are some of the more rural areas that have multi-units. Uh, the reason being is that a lot of the renters that are coming to those areas might have pets. So you might have to concede a little bit to some tenants, but a lot of times they can't find something that they really want closer to town. And you can really get a premium for rent or for rents there, and you can get a discount on the prices on the multi-units. Okay, that's great stuff. Obviously, bonus points for John Lieber on that one because not talking about an area specifically of San Diego, but a market in San Diego, the multi-unit market, which has been on fire ever since I got here. Uh, 10 plus years ago, back home, that's what you do in Missouri. You buy a duplex as your first house. You rent out the other side. They pay most of the mortgage, and then you move buy another one, mm -hmm. and you rent that other side. That's what you do. You can't do that here. That was my so, first house. Right? My first house, but it was too. 25 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. See, I mean, everybody where I'm from, that's what they do. Here, it's it's much more difficult. Fantastic point made there uh, by John Lieber. Daniel Buxa, uh, hot or not so hot market? Um, I'm going to go with hot, and my market that I specialize in is C&T. Um, I think it's really a community that's exploded over the last 10 years here. I've been born and raised in that area. There was a time where people would say, Santee, you're going to go all the way out to the East County. What the heck's out there? They, everyone had nicknames for it. I'm not going to say it out loud. but <laughs> Tell us at the break. <laughs> Santee is just absolutely exploding. You got a, a new college being built out there. There's shopping centers. You have every like big name um, store going up and restaurant. And it, like during Christmas time, people are actually coming to CNT to do their shopping. That was like unheard of 10, 15 years ago. So for me, it's just a community I think that's really exploding, very family oriented type community. Um, with regards to what you were talking about earlier, um, my first home I bought was in CNT. It was a four bedroom home. I went into the house with three roommates, rented out to the three roommates, and I was living there for free. So Perfect. if you ever get yourself in a situation where you could buy into a home and actually uh, pay very little, um, that's the way to go. Yeah. Okay. Santee is hot, uh, uh, according to Daniel Buck says. So yeah, they so they don't call it Shanty anymore, do they? Not anymore. Okay. No. I, so I wasn't sure if that was one of the one of the <coughs> nicknames. <laughs> no, <they're>, <laughs> All right. <laughs> there's a couple other not so good is ones. It, okay. No. No. Say, we're, uh, we're gonna we're gonna stay away from those. <laughs> Brian Curry doesn't want to hear it. All right. Nope. Gary Kent, hot or not so hot market? Okay. Uh, hot market, and I feel some bonus points coming on because uh -oh. I also did not go geographic. <laughs> And that is fixer upper houses. Okay. I mean, I have so many new friends now that are called house flippers. Oh, yeah. Everybody wants, they all want to be my friend and That's probably true. they all want to be my associates friends here also. So, I mean, if you have a fixer upper house, they want to buy it. Um, I have so many of the, so many flippers that are just chomping at the bit to buy houses. And interestingly, they will oftentimes pay as much or more than an average home buyer, somebody who would actually be living there. Really? Yeah, because people think, oh, if they're a if they're a flipper, they want to come in really low. Well, they do want to, but they will very oftentimes pay as much or more, uh, and that's for a few reasons. One is uh, they typically pay cash, so they have less closing costs, less carrying costs, and they're also very efficient. I mean, they can remodel houses for probably half of what it costs me. Right. So, um, that's so they've been able to find margin even paying up on the front side of it. Yes. Okay. That's a very interesting point to make as well. Fixer uppers. I, I thought that the flippers got them all already. I didn't know there was any left. I thought they already came to town and cleaned house. Uh, pun intended. Brian Curry, <laughs> hot or not so hot market? <laughs> hot. Let's talk hot. All right. Uh, number one, it's March 5th. It's 75 degrees out. San Diego's hot. Yeah, true. And San Diego is hot at the tune of 8.2% up year to date. Really? 8.2 percent if an Seriously. average market is three to five percent we're up 8.2 percent san diego's hot yeah right now oh there it is hold, hold, hold on, on. <laughs> I, had, I had more, You're done. You're I had done. more. <laughs> gary kent has challenged brian curry i wanted to gary, talk about you have 30 areas. seconds i have no stats to back me up on this <laughs> do you want some but, <laughs> <laughs> but i'm wondering are we up 8.2 percent year to date or year over year because I'd be surprised if it's year to date. It's year to date right now. Okay, you because got of the drying up of the inventory. <laughs> yeah, and I, I ran it through this morning, and so North County is the hot place. North County right now, 
is 39.6% up. Median's up over 775. Year to date? It's up, I don't, is it <clears throat> lack of inventory, multiple offers? Everything that I've looked at in, in North County right now has multiple offers on who's it. Your, who's your data source? Uh, I went right off of, uh, uh, the, uh, yeah, right off the MLS okay. this morning. Gary, do you buy that? Sure. I don't have any stats yeah. to back me up. So. Yeah. <laughs> Carlsbad's 36.8%. Oceanside's 11.3%. This whole show is under protest. Yeah. Yeah. That's got to be some kind of median price increase where maybe some of the higher end homes are selling. Because well, I don't think the average home I, is up 36%. I, I think what it tells you is there's a huge disparity in the market. I mean, the numbers are the numbers, but I think what the, the analysis of the numbers is there's a huge disparity in Something's what's good going and what's on there. not going on. Yeah. Yeah, so if it's red hot and great, boom, you get 10 offers on it. If it's eh, that's a real estate term, right, Gary? Eh, that's right. It's not so good. It's going <laughs> to sit for a while, and it's going to pull the median down. <laughs> I absolutely love it. All right. <laughs> Coming up, it's time for the win. Who will go home with the Golden Microphone Trophy today? Will be Gary Kent with Keller Williams, Brian Curry with Caldwell Banker, John Lieber with Remax, or Daniel Buxton with Mission Realty Group. Stick around. We'll make you smarter than everyone else, and we'll crown a winner. Welcome back to the Real Estate Debate with Mr. Credit on AM760 KFMB. Welcome back. It's time for the win. We'll be crowning a champion in the next few minutes here on the Real Estate Debate. Who will it be? Will it be Gary Kent getting his first trophy? Will it be Brian Curry getting his second? John Lieber getting his second, or Daniel Buxa getting his first trophy. Uh, let's check in with our judge, Dale Intrakin from Synergy One Lending and HomeLendingSanDiego.com. Dale, how do the scores look now? Three quarters of the way through the debate. Okay, so it's going to come down to this final round. Yeah, yes. Yeah. It, uh, Gary's got nine. Okay. Uh, Daniel is at 10. Brian is at 11. And John's at 15. But those flags are going to come into play. Yeah, this is, this is really interesting here because uh, we've got Brian Curry has two flags. So you add four points to him. Uh, which would bring him up to 15 points currently. Daniel Buxa also has two flags, so add four points to him, and he's got 14. So it's not just a three-horse race here, Gary, because you could come back in this segment. We're scoring 10 points total in this segment. have to be divvied up based on who pitches the best. It's time for Listing of the Week. Time now for the Listing of the Week. Oh, my God, look at this, you guys. I'm going to start the bidding for this $8 billion. Here's your chance to pitch us your most prized property. Go ahead, make my day. All right, Daniel Buxa, you are up first. You Let's hear about your Listing of the Week. We have a super hot property kit in the market next week in La Mesa. It is a two-unit property talking about multi-units. Great investment, perfect for someone who's looking to live in one unit, maybe rent the other, or potentially rent both out for a good investment. Um, they're two bedroom, one bath, 720 square foot. There's attached single car garages, also separate yards, so it'd be perfect for someone who has pets. Um, awesome property in La Mesa, great location. Um, this one will move extremely quick. It's going to be priced at 425. What? And uh, please call me with details. My name again, Daniel Buxa with Mission Realty Group, 619-368-8371. Again, 619-368-8371. And uh, can they find out more information about this property on your website as well? Absolutely. DanielBuxa.com. Okay. That's B-U-K-S-A. Exactly. Perfect. Okay. Dot com. All right. With the uh, Mission Realty Group. DanielBuxa.com. Uh, that sounds like it's going to fly off the it's shelf. Be I'm telling one, you, guys. that's. I'm telling you, it's going to fly like a hot cake. Lieber, you're going to have to call your investors uh, on that one. Somebody needs to get in there. That's exactly what you were talking about. People being able to do, and I know you really specialize in that. So that's uh, that's pretty cool. Okay, Gary Kent, your listing of the week. Okay, my listing of the week is eight three four five Sugarman Drive in La Jolla. It's near UCSD. Beautiful house. Uh, price is value range a million two to a million three. It's four bedroom, two bathroom. Uh, the lot is 28,900 square feet. Wow. So it's a big lot. Some of that is sloped. Uh, but it's a sunny house. It's one level. Uh, I call it an artist house because one of the owners is an artist. And it's uh, it kind of looks like that. It's got a lot of charm, a lot of character. It's got a kind of a valley city nightlight view. Very nice. Uh, it's on a quiet street. It's got a pool and a spa, California room with lots of windows. It's got uh, raised open beam wood ceilings fireplace, uh, brand new roof. I mean, it's so new. 
how new is it? Uh, <laughs> they put it on right after I listed the house. In fact, we had to, we had to stop the showings for a couple of days. Uh, so it's a really nice house, and it's also, and this is something I never heard of, but it's in the Adat Yashurans La Jolla Aruv. Like, what does that mean? But there's a Jewish community, and there's some special thing if you're in that community that if you're in this general location, then I can't explain exactly what it is. Is it a holy it area, Gary? Is that it's what a you're holy telling area. It's a holy yes, area. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so um, people who would understand what I said, it would have value. <laughs> I just, I just want to say that. Okay. If so, people understand what I said, then they would understand what I'm saying. <laughs> well said. Okay. So, again, this is Gary Kenna with Keller Williams La Jolla. My phone number, 858-457-KENT. That's 858-457-KENT, K-E-N-T. And my websites are GaryKent.com and GaryKentTeam.com. Okay. Great stuff from Gary Kent. Uh, and so this sounds like it's a, a specialty-type property. Um, in a very special area. It sounds like quite a bit, you get quite a bit for 1.2, 1.3. I mean, pool, spa, yeah. California room, all that extra stuff in La Jolla. That sounds to me like it's pretty well priced. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Great listing, Gary. Brian Curry, listing of the week. I want to see that one. <laughs> right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's hot. I got a listing coming up in Mount Woodson. Um, so oh, your favorite spot. My favorite spot, Mount Woodson. So it's on South Woodson. It's a view property, and you're looking all over Highland Valley. So right now, and I live up in the area, I've got snow caps on, on uh, Cuyamaca, and I'm just melting the snow off of Palomar. So this house has views of both. Interesting. Pool, never-ending, or, you know. Uh, infinity pool. Infinity pool, thank you. Uh, overlooking Highland Valley, it's a five-bedroom, three-and-a-half bath, 2258 square feet. Uh, it's going to be priced at 839 That's going to be coming on early in April. How about the lot size on that? Yeah, one, Brian? that lot size. It's a flag lot, um, so it's got a d double, you know, dual shared driveway, and then he flags off to the right, and that lot is it's got half slope, and I'd have to look. I think it's eleven five maybe on the lot size. Okay, it's okay. Really, really pretty property. Up above the golf course. Um, All about views. Labor's out there Sweet. playing golf, so he <laughs> he knows what I'm talking about. So. He would tear that course um, to pieces. Yeah, trust me. I, I know he would. I know he would. <laughs> so he's he's not invited. And how would someone get in contact with you Somebody if they were would, wanting to look at uh, Mount Woodson? Lots of different ways. Uh, phone number six one nine two five one one five eight eight. BrianCurry dot com. Brian at BrianCurry dot com is my email. And I am also a USAA and a Navy Federal Credit Union preferred broker. So if you are a member of either one of those institutions, let me know. I'll get you registered for one of their programs and get some discounts that way. Okay. Fantastic stuff from Brian Curry and Caldwell Banker, BrianCurry.com. Sounds like a good listing there. Those view listings over Mount Woodson are just beautiful. Yeah, there's something. John Lieber, how about your listing of the week, man? All right. So I've got a, uh, I've got a hot one. It's 1718 Monterey Avenue in Coronado. And this is a really special one to me. It's... It's a four-bedroom, three-bath home, 2,300 square feet. We're priced at $2.885 million. The specialness is, and this seller had spent over a year and a half remodeling this home to live in himself. And it is just truly the finest remodeled home I've ever been in. The, the, de the detail, it's a California beach cottage style home. So you've got shake siding on the front of the house. And they've back painted every piece of siding so you're never going to have termite intrusion. You've got copper gutters around the whole home. Inside, you've got La Cantina doors that open up completely, so you've got a 12-foot opening out to a deck in a saltwater pool. All the plumbing from the pool equipment to the pool has all been replumbed. I mean, it's virtually a brand-new home in Coronado. Which uh, you don't see. No. From the second floor, you look over Glorietta Bay in the golf course. It, it's fantastic. It's going to be open today from 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock, so anyone's welcome to come by and uh, – and see me and my team, and uh, we're going to be there. Um, another another point, just um, something you can do to check it out. You can you can one call me at six one nine nine two two one thousand. I do uh, have a John Lieber Group YouTube channel, so you can see videos of all my listings. If you want to go to John Lieber Group, you know just Google John Lieber Group, and you'll find my website, which is johnlieber.com. You'll find uh, we're on Instagram, Pinterest, um, Pinterest, everywhere. Everywhere you can post photos and promote listings, we're we're all over the place, and you can see videos of everything. Um, that's that one. Please stop by today. Uh, just real quick, another one I've got coming up is a investor remodel, and we we're doing video of the progress of the remodel, so you can check that out on John Lieber Group YouTube channel as well. Okay, and that that's one that's not on the market yet. Not on the market yet. 
what uh, can you give us an idea of what that property looks like? Who might be interested in that? In other words, price range gotcha. approximation. So we're it's uh, 147 Westdale and Fletcher Hills. It's Fletcher a Hills. Uh, okay. mid mid six hundred thousand dollar range, uh, single level view home. It looks e- east over the entire Elkhorn Valley, and it's way up at the top of the hill. It's kind of on a cul de sac at the end of a cul de sac. So you're totally private location. Um, about 2,300 square feet on that one as well. Okay, so in the 650 range. Mm-hmm. Okay, so if someone's interested or looking in that area in that range, then this is one that hasn't hit the market yet. They could give you a call on that. Yeah, too. and they can see the progress and kind of see the finishes that are going in. It's it's really cool. Okay, so 619-922-1000? Yeah, 619-922-1000 or johnlieber.com. Okay, great stuff. Uh, and that uh, concludes the real estate debate. So we're going to have Dale do some uh, math over here. So that we can figure out exactly. And Dale, have you done the math already? Is I've the, done the math. The math has been done. The math has been done. So we have a couple minutes. Completed. We have a couple minutes. So I'd like to chat with you a little bit about today's debate. First of all, actually, let's go around. Gary, who do you think won today? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> One of these other fine gentlemen. Definitely not me. <laughs> you, so you, Okay. <laughs> Brian, who do you think won today's debate? That was a tough debate. Uh, I think everybody did a great job. I don't know that you, it's hard to pick a winner out of this one. Hard to pick every, a winner? Yeah, so, I think everybody had something good that they brought to the table. Okay, I would second that. John mm-hmm. Lieber, who do you think won? You think you pulled it off with no flags? I'm so disappointed in your decision on that flag that I threw <laughs> that I'm, I'm having a hard time thinking about anything else. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get for kicking my butt all over the uh, golf course, yeah, buddy. I you I knew that was going to come back at some point, didn't you? Uh Daniel, what do you think? Who do you, who do you think won? You were just one point that away. That's an excellent question. I mean, this was just a great time to be able to hang out with a lot of people and kind of educate the public. And I think we're all pretty much winners here. I know it sounds cliche, but um, I agree. To me, it's you know we're here to have a good time and educate people and get our names out there. Yeah, yeah, it's great stuff. Okay, all right, Dale. Now you can step back in. I just recognized that we had a little bit of time, so I wanted to talk to everybody one more time. So. Those were all very political answers, weren't they? Well, a <laughs> everybody's little, like, everybody little, won. No, I think, I think John shot me straight. Yeah, I, yeah. all the way around. <laughs> John shot me straight. <laughs> he didn't like the challenge. Well, you know, it's, had, it's a tough one. Had John had a flag, he probably would have thrown it at you. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe uh, just, you know, me. John, just so you know, I want to get this out there. The reason I had to side with Daniel on that challenge is because I've seen too many people buy with short-term outlooks and get pinned against the wall. You know, that's all. And, and I'm... I'm jaded. I admit that because people come to me when they have problems. So, you know, I'm, I'm way jaded, but as the judge in that situation, <laughs> I would always tell people to have a long-term outlook when you're buying real estate. You know, as long as you have a long-term outlook, you really can't lose in real estate. That's, yeah. that's kind of the way I look at it. Could it work out in the short term? It could. It sure could. Um, and if you want to be a landlord, um, you know, then that's a good backup plan. Yeah, if plan. that's the plan. Totally but, agree there. But, you know, if not, then, then it's really tough. So, um, that's why I had to go that way, but obviously you're awesome. You did fantastic today. Thanks. Dale. <laughs> no. Okay. It was tough. I'm telling you, it was tough today. Today was my toughest out of all of them I've ever judged. So this was a tough one. Yeah. I was, I was like focused in, I saw mental, you. I was like, had my head down mentally. You were zeroed in. Yeah. Um, so let's go through, we'll go through Gary ended up with 12, with no flags. Okay. And then, uh, we ended up with, uh, Daniel ended up with 16. Okay. With his flags. Including the flags? Including the flags. Okay. Brian ended up with 17 with his flags, and John ended up with 18. With no flags. No flags. Unbelievable. Well John done. Lieber. Wow. Well done, Mr. Lieber. I, I forgive you. <laughs> can we still be friends? <laughs> can, you, but can we still be friends, he says. Well, you know what? Here's the really good news, John, because uh, everyone was so efficient um, in uh, pitching their properties today. You actually get a minute to talk about John Lieber and why people should call you as you won your second gold mic today. Cool. Well, um, you know, what I mentioned with, uh, with the last listing is that I think the John Lieber group, I think we've got one of the most complete marketing packages for sellers that, that anyone's got going today. We do, we do video for every home we, we sell. So if you go to John Lieber group, you can see video for everything. And one of the things I've compiled is a database of all the agents I've ever worked with, which is just hundreds and hundreds of them. And we can actually blast out video to all the agents. So we get a tremendous response from, from agents looking at my seller's listings through that medium. And it's a very unique one that, that I haven't seen around much. So I think for buyers and sellers out there, I, I love the business. I'd love to work with you. You can, you can find me on, you know, Google John Lieber, johnlieber.com or John Lieber group. Um, we're all over the place and certainly call me at 619-922-1000. 
or stop by my open house today too. Okay. Fantastic stuff from everybody. Really appreciate uh, your time today. Gary Kent, thank you for being here. You're awesome. You're a legend <laughs> in this industry. Uh, you're an amazing uh, realtor. I appreciate you being here. Brian Curry, same to you. Uh, you're awesome. You're great at what you do. Really appreciate everything that you bring to the table. Daniel, thank you for coming in for your first time today. You did a great job. Looking forward to seeing everyone back. John Lieber walks away with his second golden microphone trophy today. Stick around for Talking Money with Mr. C right here on AM760 KFMB.